actually snapped. Here's a map showing the different plates and fault lines that converge in that area. Brian Hackney joins us now to break this all down for us. So tell us a little bit about the, the mechanics of this quake. Um, it is complicated because, I, know. Yeah, I mean, break is a good word up there. The faults are just all a jumble. We're used to the San Andreas fault, Andreas, A-N-D-R-E-A-S, by the way. And it's a simple, single fault right. as it runs through the Bay Area. But up there, it is a mess. They get a lot of earthquakes, and that's why today's quake, no surprise. It was the same thing, only bigger in 1992, as a 7.2 rocked anyone anywhere near this prolific hatching site for quakes big and small, the Triple Junction. And the Mendocino Triple Junction is actually where three tectonic plates meet. And as a result, we have something complicated called fault geometry. That geometry has triggered many big quakes near Cape Mendocino. So how does a geologist view a magnitude six? expect these earthquakes to occur. They do not surprise us as earthquake geologists, but whenever they occur, they always surprise us and excite us and we want to learn more about them. This is such a hot place for quakes that there was another big one here a year ago, and the shaking from this one is not over yet. Aftershocks can occur uh, for days um, after a major earthquake like this. Any chance this is a precursor to an even bigger quake up there? There's always that chance. But it's a small chance. In the meantime, while this quake won't trigger anything in the Bay Area, we've got our own faults to worry about. We have a high probability of earthquakes, you know, near the San Andreas Fault, near the Hayward and Rogers Creek Fault. That entire stretch, we're riddled with faults and earthquakes. We live in earthquake country. We shouldn't forget that, and we should prepare. That's always the bottom line. You know, it's always a reminder to us that we do have a almost a three out of four chance of a major quake in the Bay Area between now and about 25 years from now. And you got back 25 years. It could be tomorrow night. So it takes a little time to prepare to get ready. And you will thank yourself when that inevitable quake finally does hit. That's such a good reminder, too, yeah. Brian. Yeah, it's like when you see their news about this, oh, yeah, i got to refresh my yeah, it has, you know. When I go to talk to seismologists and stuff like that, and they go, how can we get people to pay attention to getting ready for earthquakes? And I say, have a magnitude six. And we had one, and it's an opportunity to say, let's all get ready. And you can see the damage that it causes. Oh, it's extensive. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, and Ferndale's used to it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Brian. Thank okay, you Liz. so much. You bet.